this video, we're going to be learning how to make this basic resume in Scribus. There are many ways to design a resume, and in this video, we will be using a table layout. I'm going to go over how to put this together step by step. So let's get started. Welcome to class. The first thing you'll need to do once Scribus is running is to create your new document layout. So from the new document wizard, we'll select single page, set the size to letter, orientation to portrait, and set the default unit of measure. If you're looking to put something together quickly, you can set it to inches, and if you need more control over the layout, you can set it to a more fine-grained unit of measure, such as millimeters or points. Ultimately, you'll want to set it to something that you're comfortable with, and Scribus provides a number of units of measure to select from. Now let's go ahead and set the margins. When creating a resume, it's common practice to set the page margins to a quarter of an inch, or 0.25 inches, or in our case, 18 points for all sides of our document. For the purposes of this video, we'll be leaving the number of pages set to 1, and then select OK. Scribus provides us the ability to make aligning our frames to guides, like our margins, much easier by providing a snap to functionality. If you want to align a frame to a guide, you can set the frame to snap to your guides by right clicking on the page and then select snap to guides. You should be able to verify selection with the check mark indicator next to the option. The primary colors of our document will be black and white as we work through our basic layout. However, we will add a little color to our design by creating a custom base color. We will do this from the standard menu by selecting Edit, followed by Colors and Fills. Then we will select our accent color, blue, and then select the Duplicate option. We will give our new color the name Base Color and select OK. Now that our document's been set up and we have a new base or accent color, we can take a look at setting up a few paragraph styles. Creating styles is not a requirement, but does make implementing changes document-wide significantly less time-consuming. The paragraph styles we're going to create will be based on the major elements of a standard resume. These elements include the applicant name, title or position, section headers, subsections or subheaders, content, and content lists. Now I know this sounds like a lot, so let's walk through each one, one at a time. From the standard menu, select Edit, followed by Styles. From the Styles Manager window, select New and Paragraph Style. We'll call our new style Name. We'll change the line spacing from fixed line spacing to automatic line spacing. And then on the Character Style tab, we'll change the font from Arial to Roboto. Set the font size to 30 points. Style to Bold Italic. And Color to our new Base Color property. And then select Apply. Then we'll create our next style by selecting New and Paragraph Style. We'll set its name to Position, Line Spacing to Automatic, and from the Character Style tab, we'll set the font to Roboto and Size to 18 point. and select Apply. Repeating the process, we'll create another paragraph style named Heading. Using the font family Roboto, we'll set the font style to Bold and Color to our Base Color and Font Size to 16 points. Like before, we'll create another paragraph style called Subheading. As you guessed it, we'll set the font family to Rapato, 
but this time we'll set the font style to bold italic and font size to 14 points. Now that our heading styles are created, we can create our two main content styles. So like before, we will select new and then paragraph style and name it content. We'll set the font to Roboto like before and leave everything else alone. We will then create our final paragraph style by setting its based on property to our previously created content style. We will set the line spacing to automatic. We'll make sure the font family on the character style tab is set to Roboto. And we'll set the style name to content list. Finally, we'll navigate to the paragraph effects tab Select the bulleted list option and using the character table, select a character to be used as our list bullet points. For this example, we'll use the character class General Punctuation. Double click with the mouse on the triangle and select Insert before closing the window. Then we will select Apply. Our document should now be ready for us to add our content create our layout, and start applying the styles we've just created. Fortunately, all of our resume content has been provided to us in the form of a plain text file which we can import directly into Scribus. To do this, we'll add a text frame to our document by pressing T on the keyboard, and then we will hold down the shift key and click on our document canvas. This will create a text frame that completely fills the inside of our page margins. We will then select Content and then Get Text, and then navigate to the document we want to import and select OK. Once the text frame has been populated, we'll slide it just off the document canvas with our mouse. Now from the Tools menu bar, we'll select the Table option and click and drag our mouse across the document canvas. We will be prompted with an insert table window. We'll set the number of rows to three and columns to two and then select OK. Then using the snapping functionality, we'll drag the table edges to each edge of the page so that it fully fills the inside of our document margins. We will then click and drag our mouse within the table to select all of the cells in the second row. Then from the standard menu, select Table, followed by Merge Cells. Now we can start copying data from our imported text into the appropriate cells on our table. Previewing the document once all of the content has been migrated shows a bit of a glaring issue. Our table has borders around the table and cells. To remove the border, start by selecting the table. Then, from the Content Properties control panel, select the default border property and change the color from black to none. Then we will double click on the table and select all of the cells and repeat the process of setting the border color from black to none. The next step in the process is to apply the paragraph styles to each of the appropriate text elements in our document. By double clicking and then clicking and dragging, you should be able to select specific text. Once the text is selected, from the Content Properties control panel, you should be able to change the default paragraph style to the style associated with the text.
After adding the styles, we can see that there's an issue with our content list style. The text is too close to our bullet point character. To fix this, from the standard menu, we will select Edit, followed by Styles. Then we will double click on the content list style to edit it. From the Style Manager window, we navigate to the Paragraph Effect tab and increase the Distance from Text property value from 0 to 10 and select Apply. And that's about it, everyone. I encourage you to follow along with this video and watch it as many times as you'd like or need. And for those of you that don't already know, you can use the settings menu to speed the video up or slow it down. Be sure to try some things of your own and feel free to let us know what you're working on in the comments section. In this video, we discussed how to create a basic resume using a table layout in Scribus. If this video helped you or you would like to have us cover a specific topic in Scribus, let us know in the comments section. See you in the next one.